Hello everyone, we're starting Chapter 4 today. Chapter 4 December 1867 With the new year just around the corner, the Satsuma Choshu Alliance formed an army and marched on the capital. In response, the Shinsengumi moved to the Fushimi Magistrate's office and began to prepare for war. Hey, bad news, guys, shouted a soldier. The chief's been attacked. There had been no witnesses and the culprit had escaped unseen. Their motives could only be guessed at. We still haven't figured out who attacked the chief, asked a soldier. I'll bet you anything it's those bastards from that Satsuma Choshu Alliance. Ever since the attack on Kondo, the atmosphere at the Fushimi Magistrate's office had been tense, to say the least. I felt it increase as I stepped into the meeting room, carrying tea for the captains. Here's your tea. Oh, thanks, said Harada. Uh, could you just leave it here? I seemed to have walked in on a very serious discussion. All around the room were tense, drawn faces. So, what's your plan? asked Nagakura. The Satsuma Choshu Alliance wants power in the court, but they're also looking to have the Emperor grant them all of the Shogunate's assets and holdings. There's no other way to look at it. They're trying to start a war, said Nagakura. We'd be smart to start preparing for one. You have a point, said Hijikata. They've been sucking up to the emperor and they come and go at the palace like they own the place. Wasn't it just the other day that they were declared enemies of the court and not even allowed into Kyoto? Now, so far as preparing for war, said Hijikata. His eyes darted from man to man across the room looking for someone to speak up. Shimada said, Sanan has been pushing hard to augment the Fury Corps. I'm against that, said Harada. This is war, not subduing the odd Ronin. There are going to be enemies and allies everywhere in battle. I don't think we'll be able to control them. They're powerful, but it's too risky, said Harada. Agreed, said Nagakura. Besides, it's inhumane. Then what do you suggest? asked Saito. If you wish to disapprove, you should offer an alternate path. Uh, we're working on that, said Nagakura. If it was so easy to come up with a solution, you really think we'd be in this mess? He shot Saito a glare. Uh, what's your take on this, Commander? asked Shimada. Hijikata furrowed his brow and frowned. Let me think about it. We need to see what the Satsuma and Choshu are going to do, and we have to consider what the Shogunate wants. Kondo's injury had put everyone on edge, even without a war inching closer day by day. I wondered how Heisuke and Sanan felt about what was coming now that they were Furies. The Fury Corps was only active after I went to sleep, so I never got to see them. Mm -hmm. 
When I couldn't fall asleep that night, I decided to go visit Okita, who was still trying to recover from his illness. Good evening, Okita. How are you feeling? I arrived to find that Heisuko had also come to visit Okita to pass the time. Oh, hey, Chizuru, said Todo. What are you doing up so late? Uh, people might get the wrong idea if they see a girl visiting a man's room in the middle of the night. Oh, Heisuko, you're smarter than that. You know Okita and I aren't, you know. Yeah, I guess you have a point. That's not really your sort of thing, is it? Hey, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Come on, said Todo. He chuckled and tossed Okita what seemed to have been intended as a knowing grin, but the older man was far too annoyed to notice. Uh, so why are you here? asked Okita. I assume you've got a reason for visiting me in the middle of the night. Oh, um... His tone stole away some of my determination, but I pushed ahead anyway. Do you guys know that um, Sanan wants to augment the Fury Core? As soon as the words were out of my mouth, Heisuka's face clouded over. Yeah, of course, he said. Okita was a little more forthcoming. Well, if you were in Sanan's position, wouldn't you do the same thing? If I wasn't like, like this, I'd pick up my sword right now and go get revenge for Kondo. Okita's bed rest was clearly rankling him. After all, he'd known Kondo for a long time, since they'd met in Edo, long before the beginning of the Shinsengumi. What do you think, Heisuke? I asked. Uh, me? Well, I, um... I did decide to drink the water of life, but I'm not gonna lie, I was worried about what would happen to me. Sanan says we should have more men in the Fury Corps. He says we'll never win otherwise. Oh. He was so unlike the Heisuke I remembered, so stern and cold, that I couldn't help but feel sad as well. Well, no matter what Sanan says, said Okita, at the end of the day it's going to be Hichikata who makes the call. You're right, said Todo, but the Fury Corps already exists. We can't pretend it doesn't. Uh, then maybe Sanan's right, and we should use the Fury Corps however we see fit, said Okita. At least they can still wield swords. His last words were cold, hateful, and filled with self-derision. Perhaps we could use the Furies as a weapon. They might help us to win the coming war. Their strength would be an undeniable military asset. But once the war was over, what would become of them? I was afraid to ask that question because I feared I already knew the answer. The next day, an unexpected visitor arrived. Oh! Hello, Chizuru, said Princess Sen. It's been far too long. Sen? Kimigiku? Why are you here? Uh, we've business with the chief, said Kimigiku. Uh, can you go get him for us? Oh, Kondo isn't in good enough shape to speak to anyone, I said. Perhaps Hijikata? Then Hijikata will serve admirably, said Sen. All right, please come inside. Huh? said Hijikata. We don't usually allow visitors in here. What do you want? 
Uh, my apologies for intruding, said Princess Sen, but it was imperative that I speak with you today. Um, I I'll go make some tea, I said. Uh, no, thank you, but that's not necessary, said Sen. I shall take my leave as soon as I'm finished. And, in fact, I would prefer you stay. You may wish to hear this as well. Okay. What did she have to say that was so important and that might be something I should hear? I sat down in a corner and did my best to pay attention. I have come to discuss your furies, said Princess Sen. When he heard the word furies, I saw Hijikata's face twitch. I will get straight to the point, said Sen. How much longer will you employ them? Uh, what do you mean? asked Hijikata. You've kept them enslaved for quite some time. I believe you know exactly what I mean. The furies are a failed experiment. Even the shogunate has admitted to that. They are too much for your organization to deal with. With demons on your trail, you would do well to wash your hands of furies, said Princess Sen. Hijikata's frown deepened. Isn't it up to us to decide whether they're a failure or not? We've done our own research on the water of life. I don't think it's your place to judge us, ma'am. He narrowed his eyes at Sen and they glittered like spear points, but she seemed unconcerned. It was Kimigiku who spoke up. Then are you aware that the Shinsengumi's furies have been murdering people on the street to test their strength? What? said Hijikata. For a split second his cold mask dropped and I saw genuine confusion and dismay on his face. Then it was gone and he was cold and composed once again. Where did you hear that? I've no reason to tell you, but rest assured that it was from a reliable source, said Kimigiku. You have not been able to keep the water of life from driving your men mad. Your job is to protect the safety of the capital, correct? And yet your men roam the streets, killing innocent civilians. It disgusts me. Before this becomes common knowledge, I strongly suggest you disband the Fury Corps. Kimigiku's logic was sound. Hijikata had no counter-argument. Everyone in the room had fallen silent. But was it true? Were the Furies indeed cutting people down in the street for the thrill of killing? If the Fury Corps was disbanded, then Sanan and Heisuke would... Every one of us waited for Hijikata's answer with bated breath. My heart roared in my ears. I suppose we can table this for the moment, said Princess Sen. There's something else I must discuss. With this she turned and looked at me. Chizuru, will you please leave with us? What? Hadn't we already covered this the last time she came to visit? I know we spoke before, said Sen, but the situation has changed. You do understand that, don't you? Uh, soon war will break out in Kyoto, said Kimigiku. If you are going to escape, this is your chance. I knew war was coming, but to hear the truth presented so boldly was jarring. I don't believe the Shinsengumi will be able to protect you once the war begins, said Princess Sen. Please come with us. Wait a minute, said Hijikata. Are you suggesting we can't handle it? The truth is sometimes hard to accept, said Princess Sen. If Kazama returns, can you protect her from him? 
What if he comes to call while you are locked in battle elsewhere against the Satsuma and Choshu? Will you be able to protect her then? Hijikata scowled but said nothing. And in any event, said Sen, she is a demon, not a human. She should be with her own kind. We can protect her. She turned from Hijikata to face me once again. You see, you should come with us. If you leave, then they can concentrate wholly on the battles to come. Um, her words hit like blows, but she spoke the truth. War would soon break out, and perhaps remaining with the Shinsengumi would be dangerous for me and for them. I would be useless in war. I was no soldier. Even so, I wanted to stay. I looked over at Hijikata, hoping he might give me an answer. He only furrowed his brow and looked the other way, saying nothing. What was I to do? And now I have the important choice to make. I either have to leave or I should leave. So this is an interesting choice. It's of course not a choice between alternatives, but rather a choice of interpretation of how Chizuru feels, what kind of obligation she thinks she has. I have to leave implies compulsion and I don't think there was any. There is none from either side. Hijikata is staying silent and Princess Sen has simply requested, urged her to come with them. So it's a question of what Chizuru feels she should do or why she should do it and because of that I'm going with I should leave. I was sure Sen was right and I should leave but the words just couldn't come. In truth I didn't want to leave. I hoped that maybe someday all of the madness and war would end and then I could be a human being, not a demon. What do you say? asked Sen. You really ought to leave. You'll be much safer with us. Her voice was kind and I knew she had only my best interests at heart, but I still couldn't bring myself to respond. Hijikata, of course, saw straight through me. You don't want to leave, do you? he asked. Huh? Um... Then stay. What's there to think about? B but is that really okay? If Kazama came after me again... I'm not going to repeat myself. Or are you suggesting the Shinsengumi can't handle this? And we just had another flurry of petals. No, no, of course not. It's just, if I stay here and I cause trouble for you guys, then... Well, what proof do you have that these two can keep you a secret any better than we can? Even if he wasn't after you, that bastard be an enemy of ours. If we've got the same enemies, makes sense to me that we'd stick together. He was as gruff as ever, but it wasn't hard to understand what he was trying to say. So, I can stay? What the hell kind of question is that? If you were as much of a pain in the ass as you seem to think, I would have kicked you out a long time ago. Relief flooded out across my body. Thank you so much. With war set to break out at any time, the Shinsengumi was changing. I didn't know how useful I could be to them once battle was joined, but even so, Hijikata had told me it was okay to stay. (sighs) 
Ah, so you've turned me down again then, have you? said Princess Sen. Sen looked at me with a slightly sad smile as I walked her and Kimigiku out of the meeting room. I'm sorry, it was very nice of you to offer though, I said. Oh, it's all right, said Princess Sen. If you're so determined to stay, then what could I ever hope to do? There was one other tiny little thing I wanted to ask you, said Sen, when you told me before that you were um, interested in someone. Did you perchance mean Hijikata? What? Um... I wasn't quite sure how to answer that question. Um, uh, well, to be honest, I don't really know Hijikata that well, but... I stumbled over my words, not quite sure how to explain to her how I felt, perhaps because I wasn't quite sure myself. The men call him the demon because he's so strict and harsh with the soldiers. A lot of people think that he doesn't care about anyone and that he's cold, but I think he has a kind heart in there, I said. He has a lot of responsibilities, and the whole Shinsengumi rides on his back. I don't think he has any choice but to act like that. I don't know what I can do for him, but I want to stay here and do whatever I can. Sen had been nodding encouragingly and making little mms of agreement, but now she suddenly burst out laughing. Well, I dare say he has captured you quite thoroughly, said Princess Sen. What? They say that my ancestor, Suzuka Gozen, fell in love with a human by the name of Tamura Maru Sakanue and followed him to the capital. I am, in fact, their granddaughter, said Sen, so I suppose I know something of how you feel. A circumstance and rank mean little before the power of love. What? Wait, what? Love? I didn't, I never meant. She only rested her hand on my shoulder and continued. You may be two different creatures, human and demon, but do not think that means your love is doomed to failure. Best of luck to you, Chizuru. I shall be cheering for you. Uh, my lady, we should go, said Kimigiku. Oh, yes, yes, you're right, said Princess Sen. Then I must take my leave, dear Chizuru. Do take care. You mustn't underestimate Kazama. He is terribly powerful. All right, thank you. Goodbye. In mere moments, they were gone. Circumstance and rank mean little before the power of love. But was this thing I felt, the desire to be close to Hijikata, was that really love? I just wanted to be around him and help him. Besides, the most important thing to Hijikata was the Shinsengumi. He'd built it up from nothing and put everything he was into it. With war against Satsuma and Choshu brewing, he hadn't the time to think of anything else. That being the case, as someone under the care of the Shinsengumi, I needed to think of how I could best put my own skills to use. <laughs>